What's the crack lads? Welcome back to your Thursday updates and your Thursday videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at a quick review and a breakdown of Cannavaro, Pirlo and Totti. These are this week's classic players, legend players, epic players, whatever you want to call them. We've got big time Cannavaro, Pirlo and Totti as epics. And these are, I would say, three of the best players that they've released in a long time. I think, you know, they've kind of put them up there with the Juventus pack that they released um, and the Barcelona epics. And yeah, there's just been, a, there's a lot to like about these cards. Now, I think it does depend more importantly than ever now, or it's more important than ever now, um, how you train these players, right? So we're going to get into it. We're going to start with Toddy because there is a couple of different ways to train him. And I'm going to show you a couple of, um, you know, issues with a lot of these cards, right? So obviously Toddy is going to be the first one up. Absolute beast of a player in real life. I always loved him. Um, he was just such an unbelievable player, had a, had a brilliant career as well. Um, and this guy is a very decent player. He's got one touch pass, true pass and weighted pass. And of course, he's got a couple of shooting stats as well, which means that this will depend on a lot of how you play him. You know, a lot of people don't like using SSs. They like to use AMFs. Um, and if they are using SSs, they like to just use a center forward up in that position. You know, if you are playing an SS and two center forwards, this guy can just sit in the little pocket and be able to, po uh, you know, pop him in from everywhere. But you have to be good at, the, at, uh, at finishing as well. So we'll show you that in a second, right? Now, I think the all also about uh, Totti is... His biggest problem is going to be his lack of acceleration and speed and stamina. That's going to be a big issue. Obviously, you're going to have to leave him up the pitch quite high um, or else use counter target on him if you are using him there. And if you are using him as, as an AMF, there are a lot of better AMFs out there in my personal opinion, right? But he's a good card, right? And when we look at him here and we see his maxed out version here, we can see exactly where we're going to be going with him. This is the 96 rated version of him or one of the 96 rated versions of him that will give you auto allocation on him. Um, you've got 93 ball control, 93 tight possession, and of course you've got 78 acceleration. The rest of the stats are pretty standard for a card like this. Big one with 86 finishing. Obviously, if you are going to be shooting a lot, this player will be an extremely good player for you. But for me, I wouldn't train him this way. I would always, when I'm thinking about how to train a player, I would train him, you know, first and foremost, what position I want him to play in. So for me, the biggest issue I see with Totti's card is his speed and acceleration as an SS or as an AMF. Now, you don't need blistering pace uh, because of the way the speed works in the final third of your opponent's half. You don't need blistering pace like 99 Mbappe style, Roadrunner style where you're just able to blitz people because it doesn't the speed doesn't work that way you know defenders can still catch up with attackers no matter how fast they are no matter how high their speed or acceleration stat are so for me with toddy i would just try to get a good base with him if you don't shoot a lot you can just plop this down a little bit go maybe to leave it at 80 finishing or even leave it at 78 and get the boost when his form arrows up he does only have standard form that's a bit of an issue um but if you are, you know, a really good uh, a really good player and you like to hold possession, you don't really need the tight possession and the dribbling. I would say much more than 90. I would leave it at 90 because if you reduce it any lower, the dribbling is going to get affected too much. I would leave it at 90 to have your dribbling when you get the boost over 85 and your ball control and tight possession always at 90, even on a normal form, form arrow. I would also increase his stamina to 75 just to give him that little bit of a boost. If you're finding that that's too low, you can also reset it and put it at 75. But I would leave it at 72 with 75 stamina. You're still going to get a little boost to that. And then last but not least, I would pump up his dexterity to 80 um, because I want that balance at 88. I'm not too concerned about acceleration or offensive awareness with this card. I am concerned about his balance because he is going to be a fairly slow player. You're need, going to be able to control the ball when you get it and then round it off with one into shooting, okay? Now, that's if you don't shoot a lot. If you shoot a lot, you don't need as much speed, definitely don't need as much acceleration, um, and you can just, you know, pump up and have uh, 88 in his finishing there if you are going to be looking to use him as kind of like a Messi-esque player, okay? So that's something to, to keep in mind if you're looking for something like that. Passing, obviously, if you're... If you're um, Using him as an AMF instead of an SS, you can just boost up the passing. So multiple ways to train him. Always boost up the, the stats that you need, even though it doesn't sometimes make a big difference. We're moving on, lads. We are going to be going to Pirlo, one of the easiest players to train up if you're looking for an attack build of him and one of the hardest players to train up if you're looking for a defensive build of him. Because I'll be honest, I don't think that this Pirlo suits a, a defensive-minded um kind of like build right now obviously with the way that the trainer progression is working the reset progression you can try out different builds for me with Pirlo I mean I'm going very simple I'm going AMF uh, uh, or CMF 
slash attack and CMF. That's kind of where I'm going with him, right? So uh, he has got all the stats that you could want, and he's got uh, amazing player skills with one touch pass, low lofted pass, pinpoint crossing, weighted pass, early crosser. So you can attack from all areas of the pitch. He does go up 33 levels, and he does go to a 96 overall with this. But we've pumped up a lot into defending there, right? So if you want a defensive version of him, I go that way. If you want to just sit him in the pocket as an orchestrator and just pick passes all over the place, you're going to get 89 defensive engagement, 84 tackling, and 84 awareness. But the big issue with this card, even though you get a 96 overall, lads, is the aggression. You know, unless you're getting aggression over 81 or 2, there's no real point in training somebody defensively. Just get somebody else to train them defensively. Have a defensive juggernaut or an anchorman instead of an orchestrator here. Have a defensive anchorman in your back line, um, you know, or in your midfield to, to, to do that role. Don't try to turn Pirlo into it because this version of him just does not do it. We've had different versions of him before that this AC Milan pack had seven aggression more. Um, we've had a couple of different ones. This uh, Juventus one had better defensive stats. The Italian one here um, has less aggression, but more tackling and defensive awareness. So for me, I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to you know forget about the overall rating. I'm going to keep this at 80. I'm going to keep his defensive engagement at 80 because his passing stats and everything else is so good. You know, you don't need to train that up. And obviously with his dribbling and everything like that, you don't need to train that up either. So I'm going to gamble a little bit and keep his dribbling at 88. I'm not going to be running the length of the pitch with him. He's got enough of an engine at 75 speed and also the aerial strength. Um, that's going to like completely, you know, be taken away because we don't need that. Instead, we're going to focus on his balance and get that balance up as high as we can go because he is such, uh, he's such a lack of uh, physical contact, right? That's something that I definitely uh, recommend you guys to do. And then, of course, if you want as well, you can also throw on one more into passing or one more into dribbling to get that, uh, get those stats up. So you're going to go to 102 overall as a center midfielder here with Pirlo. Um, it just won't show up that way on his car because he's down as a DMF. But he is an absolute monster going forward. As I said, lads, you can always change this up a bit. If you find that you want to be able to shoot a little bit, you can actually get the finishing into the 80 overall with the free kicks and the curl and really high as well. Um, this guy is in an insane car, one of the best cards that they have released. And Pirlo is one of the best players in the game, like full stop. I will be doing a tier list quite soon if you have the players you want to train them back up. Um, and it's quite interesting who I picked, if I do say so myself, because there's a lot of really good players in there that you wouldn't think. And last but not least, we have Fabio Cannavaro, one of my favorite players growing up, lads. He was an absolute unit. He wasn't the tallest, but he was definitely one of the most aggressive center halves that, you know, ever played. Had an unbelievable career um, and was an incredible captain as well. He does have captaincy as a player scale, heading man marking, interception blocker, area superiority and acrobatic clearance, fighting spirit as well as unwavering form. This is an insane big time card, right? So he does actually go 25 levels. We have trained him up in a very simple way, just a pure defensive juggernaut, but you've still got 81 speed, 80 acceleration, 92 jump with 85 physical contact. Now, I do think this is the best version of him. You can obviously have a little bit of a bit of a, you know, boost to him if you want to go with 96 jump, if you do that little trick with the goalkeepers there, and obviously just put that into the goalkeeper stat. If you want to get um, 96 on the jump, if you wanted to go that route, because I do think that once his aggression is about 95, that is more than enough. You know, uh, you know, equally, you can pop that in if you want to. Um, you could even take down his speed. You know, his speed isn't going to be a big concern there if you wanted to do that. Um, you could take that down one if you wanted to, of course. Um, you could also take down that if you wanted to and put that in there and then have one more into speed to have 98 aggression and the rest of the defensive stats in the 90s. Um, but the jump with 90, speed and acceleration, I definitely think balance him out a little bit. The defensive stats at the moment, lads, once you're over 95 in aggression, that's kind of my cutoff point that's where i usually um take you know take cover i suppose um and as much cover as i possibly can i pop four in to get the jump up to 84 or to 94 that's going to bring it to the 95 mark as well um and then i probably would put the rest into dexterity just to have that little rapid bit of pace if you want to but more importantly for the balance when you are one-on-one -on -one with a with a attacker you know going 50 50 with him sometimes that can be an issue but it's not a big issue for this card if you want to keep it low um you could all you know you could already um 
you know, boost it into speed or stamina. So yeah, it's an insane card. You can't go too far wrong once you get his defensive stats over the 90s and then go from there. So that is it for me, lads. I'll be back streaming up and on later today. It's going to be a fairly big stream, co-op and some Division 1 or Division gameplay. So we will see you then. Peace. Let me know if you're going to spin or skip.